Evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of 1 plus tan x minus the square root of 1 plus sine x divided by x cubed. I'm not sure exactly which limit evaluation technique will be appropriate here. Um, I suppose this is a 0 over 0 form of a limit. I can see by substituting 0 in my head right away. The denominator is clearly 0. In the numerator, tan of 0 and sine of 0 are both equal to 0. And so both of those root square root symbols will be equal to 1. And with the minus sign, this will give us a uh, 0 in the, in the numerator. So perhaps Loppy Towel's rule is the thing to go for here. Um, that'll get a little bit messy because we're computing derivatives of the numerator and denominator and so on. But maybe we'll just have to manage all of the messy terms and see what happens. I think that'll be my first approach. Hopefully that works after one application of Loppy Towel's rule. Otherwise, we'll either have to do it again or think of a different way of evaluating this. I think the way I'm going to do it is just break it down into a whole bunch of simple steps, individual derivatives that I want to compute. So f of x, I'll call this 1 plus tan x square root, and g of x will be 1 plus sine x square root. I'll have to compute derivatives of both of these and take a difference, and then we'll come back to substituting into L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so with L'Hopital's rule, we again get a 0 over 0 expression. So if I call this the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x minus g of x divided by x cubed, I'm also, I mean, this is equal by L'Hopital's rule if the limit exists. If the limit exists, this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x prime minus g prime divided by 3x squared. Um, but at 0, we again have 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. So we may have to write this by actually substituting in all these messy expressions. So I need to ask myself if I really want to apply L'Hopital's rule again to this. Maybe there are some simplifications that can be done first. I suppose, in some sense, these things aren't going to matter anymore. Or am I tricking myself? Um, I, like, I'm kind of tempted to write that this is equal to, I'll put a question mark here because I'm not sure. Limit as x approaches 0 of secant squared x minus cosine x divided by 6x squared. I'm tempted to write this, but I don't know. I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this for sure. This may not be true. Oh, you know what I can do here? Um, I can put thing, the numerator, I can put in a common denominator of some form. Or can I? Hold on. No, I thought I could do something like take one of the cosines out of that and bring it into the square root sign, but I have the order of things incorrect. Maybe I can... Hmm. Well, maybe I can do it in both. I, I, um, no, because this one wants to bring a 1 over cosine down. Wait, if I factor out cosine from this? Maybe I just have to put everything on a common denominator. Um, now, of course, I'm missing... Okay, so this might lead us somewhere nice. 
So all I've done is I've kind of, I've multiplied and divided by the same quantity uh, and then expanded things. Let me make sure I did this correctly. 1 plus 10x times 1 plus 10x under square root gives me that. That times that and that times that are the same, so they cancel. And then I have to subtract. So I have 1 plus sine x itself with a minus sign. I subtract 1, subtract sine x, okay? And the reason why this might help is because now I'm trying to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 of this whole thing. But this will be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 10x minus sine x divided by x cubed times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over this root plus this other root, like that. Right? All I'm doing is I'm thinking of this as being the product of two terms. That's one and that's the other. Uh, so as long as everything, as, all, as long as all the limits work, this will be true. Um, and this has a very well-defined limit because I can just substitute x equals 0. Uh, that's 0, that's 0, so this limit, uh, I guess, is just equal to 1 over 2, right? So in total, I now have x, limit as x approaches 0, of tan x minus sine x divided by, let me just make sure this evaluates to 2, x equals 0, that's 0, 0, yeah, 2x cubed. And this should be a much more reasonable thing to evaluate. Again, I'm just going to use L'Hopital's rule. You could probably do some things with, you know, Taylor series and and throwing out higher order terms or seeing how the Taylor series uh, things work. But I'm, again, just going to use L'Hopital's rule. We are back into a 0 over 0 form of the limit. I won't write out all the derivatives precisely. But derivative of tan this is secant squared x. Here we have minus cosine x. In the denominator, we'll have 6x squared. I again have a 0 over 0 because when x is equal 0, that's equal to 1 and that's equal to 1. So let's apply L'Hopital's rule again. can never remember the derivative of secant. I believe the derivative of secant is secant tan. So secant prime is secant tan, secant squared tan x plus sine x divided by 12x. I think we're still in a 0 over 0 form. If I substitute 0, that 0, that 0, that 0, okay? So let's go one more derivative. 2. Okay, the derivative of secant squared. 2 secant squared x tan x. So that's the derivative of secant squared. I think I did this correctly. Let me uh, check that. I'm going to do some rough work here to make sure that's, that's correct. Yeah, okay, so this is correct. Uh, and now when I substitute x equals 0, I can actually just do the substitution. That's 0, so we can ignore this term. Uh, this is 1, so I end up with 2 plus 1 over 12, which is 3 over 12, which is 1 over 4. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that's correct. I'm fairly confident in it, as long as I didn't make any mistakes with derivatives and so on. Um, the, the key here really was finding a simpler form of this function 
to apply lobby towels rule to. I knew as soon as I looked at this that applying lobby towels rule directly was going to be a bit of a mess. Um, obviously because you have this composition of square roots and trigonometric functions. Um, but I sort of just tried this on a whim, tried multiplying like that because of course I knew that the numerator would simplify. But then as I was going through the computations, what also what I also realized is this thing has a well-defined limit as x goes to zero. It's clearly just two. And so that can be factored out. And I was left with something where we can apply L'Hopital's rule several times. Uh, you kind of know when in, in applying L'Hopital's rule, if one of the two things is a polynomial, it's eventually going to terminate. It's eventually going to terminate in an actual limit, or you'll get, um, you know, you'll get something finite divided by zero, uh, divided by zero. Um, so like the X cubed meant that I knew I was only going to have to apply lobby towels rule three times at the most. Anyway, this is a cool problem. If I have more to say about it, I'll put it down in the description. Thanks for watching.